Hi everyone, my name is Julie Sebi. I write the Analytics Corner blog that focuses on data engineering and analytics with Alteryx and Spotfire. Thanks for tuning in today to check out this video on how to create drop-down property controls. This is the first in a seven-part series on how to create all the different types of property controls in Spotfire. When I first started learning Spotfire, I took TIBCO's Essentials 1 and 2 courses online, and then I waited about six months before taking Advanced Configurations, which is the course that taught you how to use property controls. And I couldn't believe that I had wasted so much time not knowing how to use property controls because they are awesome. If you aren't familiar with property controls, prepare to have your mind blown. Uh, in my opinion, they're what makes Spotfire a better tool than Power BI because they give so much power and flexibility to the user even users who have no idea how to create property controls. So let me show you how to create a basic dropdown. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is add a text area to your canvas, which is what I have right here. And then we will click on either edit text area or edit HTML. Once I learned how to write HTML, I stopped using edit text area altogether because the GUI can sometimes uh, give you the wrong result or not give you what you're looking for. So I'm gonna to go to edit HTML, and then I'm gonna click on the insert property controls button and choose drop down list. Here you can see that we're in the document properties tab. We're in the drop down list control type, and we're gonna click on the new button to create a new property control. And I'm gonna call this drop down one. Because we're going to put column names in here, the data type should be set to string, and you don't need anything in the value text box. Once this is set, you need to come into this set property value through dropdown and choose an option. You have five different options. And if you're unfamiliar with these, go ahead and take a look at the written blog post because I write out what these different options are for. Since we're gonna create a dropdown list of column names, I select column selection. The default in the settings here is to give you a list of all of the columns in your data table. But usually you don't want all of the columns, usually you want a subset. And so we're gonna click on select columns. We are going to create a new column property, which note is different from a document property. And because I've kind of already practiced this for the written blog post, you can see I've already created a column property, but if we were doing it from scratch, I would just click new and I would give it a name. It can't be named the same thing as your document property and it can't have spaces. So I'll just go ahead and for the purpose of example, create a second one called drop down two options. And your data type here is always gonna be Boolean. And then this needs to be set uh, either true or false. And there is a link in the written blog post that explains the difference between true and false. Really, it's not gonna matter a whole lot. I always just default to false. So I will click OK, and then I will select the columns that I want to appear in my dropdown, and I will click OK. And now I have a dropdown property control. If I click OK, you'll see that this is now populated in my, in my text box. And we are going to attach this to the y-axis of the visualization. So I'm gonna add a little bit of explanation to my text area. I will save it. And now that we've created the property control, we need to attach it to our visualization. And there's two different ways that you can do that. There's sort of a, the easy way or the you write the syntax way. The easy way is simply to go to the selector you would like to attach the control to, right click and choose set from property. It'll bring up the list. I will choose my drop down property control. And now I can toggle within my drop down and it will update the visualization. The other way to do this is to write the actual syntax. And it's, it is good to know how to write the syntax because there will probably be more complex use cases that you'll run into where you'll need to write syntax. And that is essentially what Spotfire is doing under the covers whenever we select set from property. So in order to see the syntax that's written, we'll go to custom expression. And this is the syntax. It's using this uh, escape function in order to put square brackets 
around the string that's being fed into the control. And the purpose of that is to make sure that what it's sending gets interpreted as a column name. So literally what that is doing here is, so we have routes selected. That's what this right here is doing, is it's creating this. And the syntax for the property control itself is just the dollar sign and then squiggly brackets wrapped around the name of the property control. And then what that leaves us with are these greater than, less than signs. And what these do in Spotfire is indicate to the visualization whether the data should be categorical or continuous. And so it's currently, because it has the because it has these uh, greater than, less than signs around it, I'm sure there's a name for these operators, I'm probably calling it the wrong thing, then, then it's interpreted as categorical. That's what we have here. And so if I remove these, it's not gonna throw an error, but it'll treat the data as continuous by putting it in these really tall, skinny bars. So that's what that syntax is doing. Okay, now we have good visualization. And so that's how you create a drop-down property control. And before I wrap up this post, I just wanna show you where you can find these in case you create some that you need to delete. And also just to explain the difference between a document property and a column property. So if you go into the file menu, document properties, properties tab, this is where you'll see the drop-down property control that you created, drop-down one. And so that's where you come if you need to delete these or you can't rename them, which is unfortunate. I don't think you can. No, you can't rename them, but you can delete them. And then the column property is visible from the data menu, column properties. And I know that the route was one of the options in my property. So if I go here, you'll see that route is part of drop down option drop down one options and drop down two options and so this is also where you can delete these and take note that a column property can be attached to more than one document property and a column can have more than one column property and now you know how to create drop down property controls stay tuned for other parts in this series thanks please subscribe and share if you found the content useful